Richard D. Wolff is Professor of Economics Emeritus at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. His educational background includes a BA in History from Harvard College, a MA in Economics from Stanford University, a MA in History as well as a PhD in Economics from Yale. He is a co-founder and contributor of Democracy at Work, a nonprofit organization that promotes democratic workplaces as a key part of a transition to a better economic system. The New York Times Magazine has named him America's most prominent Marxist economist. part of an answer to such a question uh, has to be, if you are honest, that people don't agree on this subject. They don't agree on how to define capitalism. They don't agree on how to define socialism. And of course, then they cannot agree on what the difference is between the two of them, since they don't agree on what it is. So maybe the best way to handle this is to tell you briefly what has been in the past the dominant understanding because that will then allow me to tell you how and why it's changing now. And that's simply the reality people have to get used to if they're going to enter into this debate. Okay, so traditionally, emerging out of the 19th century and dominant for the 20th century, here was the basic idea. Capitalism, it was said, is a system in which the means of production factories, buildings, money, cash, all of that was privately owned by individuals, either as individual persons or in groups, whereas socialism was publicly owned. That is, the society as a whole would collectively own the means of production and they would be managed by the representative of the whole people, namely the government or the state. So capitalism is private ownership of means of production. Socialism is collective or state ownership. And the second basic difference was that in a capitalist system, goods and services go from the producer, those who make them, to the consumer, those who use them, by means of a market exchange. That is, the producer sells what has been produced to the consumer who buys it. To be very literal, it means that the produced object, whether it's a good or a service, has to go through an exchange process before it reaches the consumer. By contrast, socialism was defined as an arrangement in which the passage from production to consumption was done by a collectively organized plan. Planning was socialism, Market exchange was capitalism. So to make it very simple, capitalism is private ownership and markets, and socialism is collective or state ownership and government planning that could be organized in a variety of ways. That's why, for example, in the Soviet Revolution or in the Chinese Revolution, when the change was organized, private property was withdrawn from private owners and given over to the state in the name of the whole people. And markets were either suppressed or made secondary to a general plan, which it was the government's responsibility to organize. Capitalism was overcome by socialism, the argument went, when the state took over private ownership and state planning took dominance over markets if they were left at all to play a role. The problem with this definition was always the same. Namely, nothing was changed in the immediate production relationship. In other words, the relationship between who gives you the order of what to do in the workplace, where to sit, what machine to use, in what way, for what period of time, in what relationship to others working, all of the questions of the organization of the workplace were not touched in this discussion. It was as if it didn't matter. It was as if you had made the revolution simply by changing the ownership 
and the distribution system, not by the relationships. What has happened now is, for a number of reasons, that old definition of the difference has been rejected. Not by everybody. This is an ongoing process. But the new direction, which I am part of and which I believe is becoming dominant, is critical of the old definition, basically around the idea that to change the ownership and to change the system of distribution simply is not enough. That when you do that, but you leave in place the organization of the actual work process and the work relationships and the work structure, you are leaving in place a crucial part of capitalism. So now let me explain this argument. In this view, what distinguishes capitalism from other systems isn't private ownership and isn't market distributions. This perspective reminds us that in the old feudal system and in the prior slavery systems, you also had markets. You also had uh, private ownership of slaves, private ownership at various times of land in feudalism and so on. So that the proper way, the new way, the more emerging way is to say that the distinction between capitalism and other systems should be focused on the relationships in work, in the process of producing the goods and services without which we cannot live. So that, for example, slavery, the relationship is one group of people owns another group of people. In feudalism, one group of people, the lords, have complete dominion, domination, over another group of people called serfs. In capitalism, you don't have the slavery relationship and you don't have the feudal relationship. You have the relationship of employer to employee. One group of people gives the opportunity to work and the other group of people depends on having the opportunity of work given to them in an exchange of wages for labor. Okay, with this framework, what is then the distinction between capitalism and socialism? And then the answer becomes very clear and precise. Socialism is when you overcome, you end the relationship of employer to employee. No longer do you divide some people in the production process who are the board of directors, the corporate leaders, the ones who decide what to produce, how to produce, where to produce, and what to do with the profits, and other people whose job it is to come five or six days a week, do what they are told, and then go home. That's over. Socialism, in this perspective, is when the workers together as a society or a community, socialism, communism, that's when workers democratically together, one worker, one vote, decide all the basic decisions of the production world. Then you have socialism. And until then, you don't have socialism, which means you have to come up with another phrase to capture the Soviet Union or the People's Republic of China. And for lack of time, the answer is these are state forms of capitalism. Why? Because the state owns and the state plans. But we call it capitalism because the state has not, or at least not yet, removed the employer-employee relationship.